Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is November 16th, 2021, and I'm so very, very honored to be here with Elba Cabrera, a pioneering advocate for Puerto Rican and Latino arts and culture, who has far too many accomplishments, awards, and recognitions to her name to even begin to do her justice. She's also the sister of two other outstanding women, Dr. Evelina Antonetti and Lillian Lopez, who are unfortunately no longer with us. Elba has led such an incredibly rich life, so I'm sure we'll end up having to record multiple parts, but let's just dive right into it. So we begin these oral histories by asking, why don't you tell us a little bit about your family's history and background and some of your earliest memories? Okay, well, I came to this country uh, in 1935. Uh, my sister, uh, Evelina, had, um, I was born, I was born in, in uh, Ponce, Puerto Rico. Sure. And uh, the day I was born, uh, Evelina left to come to New York. She actually saw me, my, she saw my mother giving birth to me. Yeah. And she said it was the hardest thing for her to, to leave. I'm sure, To yeah. leave her new baby sister. But my aunt, who had come to, to New York from Puerto Rico in 1923, mm. had sent for her. And uh, so she was le leaving. And that was uh, actually September 10th, 1933, okay. that uh, Evelina came to this country. Sure. And um, uh, she was with my aunt. She um, landed in the Brooklyn Navy Yards, I think okay. it was. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the boat was the uh, El Ponce. That okay, was the sure. name of the boat. And uh, both the ship. Uh, when, when Evelina uh, came, she went to live at 117th Street in East Harlem. Sure. And it was, uh, I think, or Fifth Avenue, I think. Because, uh, you know, this is all what I've heard. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't You're around. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, two years later, um, my aunt sent for us. Sent for me and my mom and Lillian. Sure. And we came on the same ship and landed in Brooklyn as well. And uh, we went to live with my aunt... And this was uh, an extended family living in Spanish Harlem. Sure. Uh, the, we went to live, I don't know the first place that we lived, uh, but I know it was in, in Spanish Harlem. Um, and my recollections, because now I've, I've come here as a year and a half, I was a year and a half old. Yeah. So uh, people ask me, how was it when you came? I don't remember. Sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> you know, so I do go back to at least when I was three to four years old. Sure. And I do remember living in uh, in the extended family and a lot of people loving me and uh, taking care of me. My aunt, her husband, uh, who was... Uh, I used to call Papi because he was my uncle, but he raised me. Sure. My mother was a single mom, and um, we all lived together. And those memories for me, you know, are, are right here. Absolutely. And it keeps me, it keeps me uh, centered. Absolutely. And uh, it, it was just a, a wonderful uh, experience. Um, my mother and my aunt worked at the laundry at Hotel New Yorker, which okay. was a very, very hard work, yeah, many hours. I'm sure. Uh, and their pay wasn't that great. I'm sure. <laughs> I yeah. think she started at six dollars a week. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and um, uh, she was a, uh, my mom and my aunt, very responsible. And my uncle, because it was during the depression time, you know, whatever job he could get. Absolutely. That's what he did, you know. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if you know what a numbers runner was. Well, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was part of his job. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Absolutely. And, you know, to bring food on the table. He also was a, a 
promoter with the dances. Okay, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And that was uh, uh, the Park Plaza, which was a 110th Street in Spanish Harlem yeah. again. Um, so he knew a lot of the musicians. I'm sure. And uh, he, he was always, you know, bringing people home. So my, uh, one of my recollections, and I really remember this, was when uh, uh, I used to have birthday parties. Yeah. And the musicians would come and, and play. Oh, wow. And that was during the day, and then at night, the, the adults had their party. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I, I remember that so, so well. I remember the cake. I remember... Uh, the mus musicians, it was uh, Machito. Oh, Machito, sure. Yeah, and it was uh, Mario Bausa, who okay. was his brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alberto Isnaga was another one. Uh, I know that my uncle knew uh, este Rafael Hernandez. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my aunt. Sure. Uh, they also knew uh, Schomburg. Okay, yeah, oh, they and, did, okay. Yeah, no, no, it, it, the list is very long. Um, also, another person that was in the circle, and here I'm a little girl, so I just, you know, I don't remember everything, but I do remember the people in the house. Sure. Uh, Pura del Pere. Okay, yeah, Rosa, yeah. Yes. Wow. So, you know, all these people, who, you know, were part of, my aunt and uncle's circle. Sure. My mother was very quiet. Yeah. She was um, a lot like Lillian. I see. You know, I Lillian see. was very serious about her work with the library. Sure. And, um, but the personalities, uh, I think, in my opinion, Evelina and I did. My were like uh, my aunt. Okay. Like yeah. Tia Vicenta because. She was, at that time, out, you know, uh, politicking and, and yeah. doing what she had to do besides her job. She did work with La, La Guardia. Okay, sure. Who lived near us because he lived on 100 and, I think it was 110th, 109th and 5th. Sure. It's one of those buildings that's still up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so, she, you know, she was involved with that. And as we got older, you know, I have always had uh, such love for my family and for my sisters who who treated me special because I was the baby yeah, and yeah. I was spoiled because my uncle spoiled me <laughs> and, um, and now that I look back on it as boy I really got away with a lot <laughs> what they didn't get away with I did but uh, yeah it was just beautiful uh, during that time, which we're talking about the 40s now, sure, people were uh, cared for each other. Yeah, absolutely. It was a community. And, you know, I always felt loved. <laughs> I always felt that everybody was taking care of me. Sure. And uh, so my memories of childhood are, are just incredible. It sounds like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. incredible. So... Um, what do I remember about living there besides that, you know, family connection or friends, uh, was that um, I went to school. Sure. At, uh, I, was, I guess I was five years old. And elementary school. I didn't go to kindergarten. Yeah. I went right into first grade. And I was terrified because I didn't understand a word sure, that sure. the teacher was saying. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, before I knew it, and because of my sisters who were already in school, yeah, I learned the language. Sure. But it was very terrifying I'm at the sure. beginning. Yeah. At the beginning, and I don't even remember n not speaking English. I just, you know, I just remember that part. The terror. Yeah. Yeah, the terror. But I did learn it because children are sponges. Absolutely. Watching my children and my grandchildren, uh, you know, I marvel at, at the, all the information that they can have right up here. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. So anyway, so um, here we are. We, we're already living there, I, you know, since I was a baby. And uh, uh, Evelina and Lillian were in high school already 
and I was, you know, I guess that must have been around the third grade. We did move a lot, by the way. Sure. Because sure. during that time, you, uh, <laughs> the landlords used to give you, um, I don't know if you know this, they, the landlords would give you um, uh, a bonus I've if you heard. moved to their apartment. Yeah. And my aunt was, she was smart enough <laughs> to take advantage of that. Sure. So we'd moved a lot. Yeah, yeah. I remember at least three or four addresses. Wow. I don't know if there was anything before that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, um, we, one of the last places we lived with my aunt was a hundred and 16th Street. Okay, sure. Where right now, you know, they knocked down the building, of course. Yeah. There's the luxury building. But that's the one I remember. I remember going, I lived on 115th. Sure. I lived on 111th. Yeah. Now, the 111th sticks out in my mind because my mother was uh, uh, robbed in the building. Oh, I and see, And the guy pushed her down the stairs. Oh, and she didn't get hurt, but uh, she held up to that pocketbook because she had uh, she had money that didn't belong to her. Yeah. And then I guess her screams, people came out, and he ran away. Wow. wow. So I remember that, and I remember feeling, oh my goodness, you know, my mom, you know, because uh, we were very close. Yeah. You know, when you're the little one, and and uh, your mom is your world absolutely yeah so uh, yeah I remember that and I remember another thing about 111 I got the mumps oh you got the mumps oh <laughs> I remember that I was uh, and I remember uh, that they put all kinds of creams on me and everything and and when they went to the, I think the doctor came because the doctors used to come to the house yeah 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 <laughs> he told us not I to know. he told them not to do to take all that stuff out. It was some kind of black stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah, but anyway, I remember that. And I remember going for my, uh, uh, tons I had the tonsillitis. Oh, they, they, okay. they used to take, whether you you were sick or not, when you reached if five or six years old, they took your tonsils they just out. Them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. <laughs> you know, no, no question. I remember going to uh, Flower Fifth Avenue. The building's still there, but it's it's not uh, the hospital. Yeah. And that was the hospital from the neighborhood. Okay, sure, yeah. And <laughs> it was so funny because my my best best girlfriend, who was uh, uh, she actually came to live with us in one of the buildings with her mom. Yeah. Uh, her apartments, I should say, and uh, she was. Uh, two years older than me. Sure. But we became, we were very, very close. Uh, she's passed away since, but uh, um, we were together. She came to live here too. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we were yeah. together for a long time. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, our friendship was more than that. It was sisterhood. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to <laughs> say that when Sylvia was living with us, uh, she got we both got some kind of rashes on mm. the arms and nobody knew what it was and they took us to flower fifth yeah and the doctors didn't know what it was <laughs> and eventually it went away yeah but whatever it was it was it was itchy oh, and wow. you know it was some kind of i guess virus or something yeah something like but, that uh who we probably gave it to each other <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so that was that was another recollection uh, the recollections of the musicians in the house, um, of just uh, the neighborhood. The neighborhood we we used to shop in the uh, we called the La Marqueta. Oh sure, sure, I've heard about that before. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the only place that uh, uh, the Puerto Ricans could go to shop the things from the island. Absolutely. Otherwise, yeah. forget about it. You're not yeah. finding yuca or yaltia or any, any nothing. Of, <laughs> nothing. Any of that. The bananas. Uh, yeah. at the plat uh, the platano. Yeah. So anyway, so that was an adventure going shopping there. Yeah. You know, and I, and I was always the one that went with my mom because I was the youngest one, and my sisters were doing their thing. So 
uh, I would go shopping with her. And the other place that my mother <laughs> always took me to, which I hated, was the vivero. The vivero uh, is where okay. they have the fresh chickens. And sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to hate the smell. Oh, my God. And Absolutely. then she would stand there and she would tell, she would tell the, the guy, no, 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 yo no quiero esa, no, me da esa, give me that one. And that I remember vivid, vividly, because yeah, they wanted fresh chicken for Sunday, because sure. we had soup, chicken soup, and we had uh, arroz con pollo, sure. and beans, and you know, that was, that was the ritual. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, those are, and then I remember my mother going to work, you know, uh, we had another cousin that came to live with us after we came, Santos, and uh, she uh, took care of us uh, for a while. Uh, I know that Lillian and Evelina took care of me. Sure. Um, but then she went to work in the laundry as well. Okay, okay, so I So they were all working in the laundry. So during the war, my aunt... You know, being who she was, yeah, went and applied to work at the post office. Okay, okay. Because they were looking for for women because the men weren't here, and she got the job and she told my mom, you know, to go, but my mother was afraid. Mm. She was afraid uh, that you know she wouldn't be able to uh, get the job or, or sure. she just didn't want to leave, so she stayed. In the, in the laundry, and my mother, my aunt continued working at the post office yeah. while she was here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what happened was that little Evelina got married very young. She yeah. was eighteen, and uh, but during the time that she was there, she was very involved in working with the community and the people. She saw, you know, the injustices. Sure. Uh, there's a story about how she would go on to the, uh, I don't know if you read it, uh, it was the, we, we, they did a book about it, uh, All for the Better, mm. and it's by Nicolas Amour, it was commissioned by the uh, uh, Roots Foundation. Sure, yeah. And uh, so anyway, uh, that was one of the things that she did, she, she would go to the people and uh, bring... She would, first of all, she would go and collect, you know, she had whatever papers she needed, she would collect food for the neighborhood. Yeah. And we had a, uh, a cousin, uh, I guess he was a second cousin to us, that would, that rode the, he was a conductor on the trolley. Okay, okay, yeah. So yeah. she would get on the trolley for free. Yeah. And come back with this food and give it to, to people. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Evelina at the age of 11 or so. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, then she got involved very much with the politics as she kept getting older. Sure, uh, sure, She worked sure. with Vito Marcantonio. I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah she yeah. worked uh, on the campaign there. Uh, Jesus Colón. Oh, sure, absolutely. Uh, so she was really, uh, you know, uh, at a very young age, before she even finished high school, she was already, you know, uh, a leader. Yeah, absolutely. She was a leader in high school, too. Yeah. And, and and if I go back, let me say this. When I say leader, she was a leader when she was born. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Because we have a friend, a friend of hers who still lives here in, in, uh, in co-op. She's 90-some-odd years old. And she went to school with Evelina. Wow. Evelina was older than her, but I guess they must have, it, you know, didn't matter the ages, you know, they had a one room. Sure. You know, uh, but anyway, she she tells me, you know, that Evelina was, uh, while she was in school in Puerto Rico, she was very, very, very active and uh, was a leader in her class. Yeah. And that the teacher, you know, uh, that they all did, be, between my friend Dolores, Dolores Roque, and her, they just, uh, that may be someone you'd like to. Yeah, to it sounds be, like it. it because sounds she's, like it. she's, she has a lot of stories. Um, and uh, they, so, you know, they, they were very, very close there, but then 
she says when Evelina had to leave, everybody was so sad. Yeah. And yeah, she said yeah. that she, she herself was devastated that her best friend was leaving. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so forward, forward, forward over to uh, uh, after Evelina got married uh, to uh, Monty, uh, Binanto Montenegro was his name. And they got married. They moved to the. They lived in in the barrio for about a year. Okay, sure. And then decided to go to the Bronx. So he he was in the service when when they moved to them. They moved to the Bronx, mm. and Evelina wanted my mom to move from where we were. And that I remember was 107th Street. Okay, I see. In Manhattan, yeah. and again, my mother was afraid. Yeah. And she said, oh, how can I, I won't be able, I don't know, the, the rent is higher. And Evelina and her husband said that they would uh, help her if, if uh, need be. Yeah. And guess what the rent was? You can never guess. $27 a month. Okay, yeah, sure. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. So it was, she never had to ask because she did it to it. And it was a, a small apartment on Concord Avenue. Unfortunately, that the buildings there were three buildings, and they they were taken down. Sure. There's a new, new building there now. So my childhood, you know, uh, when I went around to see that, that that hurt. That hurt so much. I'm sure it did. Yeah. 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 It, it has a lot of good memories. Uh, when we did move, uh, my aunt, you know, stayed in Manhattan. Uh, and that was, I guess that must have been four, around, we must have moved up here around 42, 43, around there. Okay, yeah. And my aunt stayed in Manhattan, but uh, then her husband in 1947 said he wanted to go back to Puerto Rico. Oh, okay, okay, I see. And my aunt didn't want to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, you know, she really was a New Yorker by that time. Yeah. She loved the cold weather. <laughs> she loved the cold weather. And, uh, uh, no, uh, he said to her, I'm going with or without you. So she said, okay. So she, she had two sons by then. And uh, they were little. Uh, one was four, I think. Mm. The other one was six, something like that. And those were my cousins. And uh, so they left. Yeah. And we were in the Bronx. Sure. I was nine years old, so I remember that clearly. Yeah, when they yeah. Left. Uh, we went, uh, I was in the fourth grade, that I remember. Sure. Uh, and we lived on Concord Avenue. Evelina lived on Jackson Avenue, right okay. on the corner. Yeah, 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 sure. Because, you know, she wanted us nearby. And it was good because uh, since she was home, she wasn't working, she was uh, sort of, Caretaking, yeah, take, taking care of me too while sure. my mother worked, and Lillian now is in high school, and working part time. I see, I okay. see. Which which high school was Lillian going to? She Jennifer? went to uh, oh, uh, in, in Manhattan, oh, Lower East Side, Lower like Fourteenth Street. Mm. Uh, it'll come to me. Yeah, it'll come to I me. I can picture the build it's the cool. building. My mind, but it's like right I've near heard the name before, but yeah, no, no, it, it was a commercial for you know, for people, uh, women that wanted to work this in the office, sure. Uh, I don't know, it was a very famous school, I don't know why it's out of my head right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it'll probably come to me when this is over, <laughs> yeah, that's always how it happens, but that's yeah. where she went. Evelina went to Watley. Okay, I see. In the Manhattan. Yeah, That's yeah. where she went. Then Lillian went to this school that I don't remember. <laughs> and uh, I was at PS25, which okay. is now the bilingual school. Sure, sure, absolutely. And I'll tell you why it is the bilingual yes, school. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but when I went, it was just the elementary school. Sure. I was in the fourth grade. Uh, I was you know a little timid because I had to make new friends yeah but by that time I had the language so sure. that Absolutely. that was no problem 
but I did have a good uh, uh, education there. I had wonderful teachers. In fact, my fourth grade teacher, uh, Miss Cohen, Mrs. Cohen, uh, lived on the concourse. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And one year, she that was the last year that I that I had her because she became pregnant. But when teachers became pregnant, as soon as you, they showed, yeah, they couldn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, that year, just before school ended, she uh, asked if I could come to her house to uh, take some plants. Mm. I don't remember exactly what the, yeah, I was taking them or bringing them. I think I was taking them. And I asked my mother, and she was, my mother was thrilled that yeah. a teacher would invite me to her home. <laughs> and I could tell you this, when I saw that apartment, I said, I want an apartment like this when I grow up. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure. it, I had never seen an apartment with, you know, the little steps. Yeah, yeah, Into yeah, the yeah. dining room. Have you seen those apartments? Well, I've, I've heard of them. I've never seen one in person, oh, no. They're <laughs> talking about large rooms. Yeah. They're beautiful. Oh, I'm sure. Absolutely beautiful. Sure. So anyway, and it was around 165th Street. Okay. Right near City Hall, uh, or Borough Bar Bar Hall. Bar yeah, Bar sure. And uh, I remember that so clearly. And then I remember... Her wearing the top that showed that she was pregnant. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. in the school, she she wasn't showing. Sure. But I knew I knew for sure then when I saw her. Yeah. But she was one of my teachers. So I went to to PS twenty five until the sixth grade. Sure. And uh, it was uh, good. I I was a good student. Uh, Evelina was the one that went to the parent teacher conferences because my mother was working and it was I'm only sure. during the day. Now yeah. now people can see it, you know, they can zoom yeah, <laughs> or they can go see the teachers in person. So things have changed there. And uh, let me see, Evelina got pregnant and had her first child during that time. Sure. I was I was nine years old when uh, Lorraine was born. Okay, I see, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's Joey's mother. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah sure. And uh, it, Lebanon Hospital was right down the block from us. Yeah. It was, we used to call it the hospital on the, on the mountain because mm. there was a big rock formation there, yeah. which they eventually took down, but that's where the hospital was. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. In yeah. fact, I think now there's like a health there? Yeah, yeah, there is. I've, yeah. Yeah. And um, so we used to, Evelina used to see me when she gave birth because they used to keep you for a week, yeah. three or four days at least, in the hospital. She used to see me playing downstairs. Oh. <laughs> you know, she could see from, sure. from her window. And uh, 625 Jackson Avenue, her building's still up. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, when I go by, in fact, there's just this week I, I, I uh, think it was Sunday it was over the weekend Saturday that uh, I was able to go we were going someplace else and we took the neighborhood route just because yeah. of the traffic and oh, the, for sure. the Bruckner I, 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 I so I said too. you know this is good because I was you know reminiscing about all the places that I, I lived in and, and yeah and uh, Brought back good memories. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so seeing the, the, the neighborhood was just, just, it was just brought back, like I said, good, good, good memories. Absolutely. And um, you know, I, I started to see. Uh, I was with my niece. That's where my niece uh, Nita, uh, Evelina's daughter. The, uh, she had three children, so sure. uh, uh, Anita had picked me up. Uh, we were going, we were going to a funeral, in fact, uh, in Brooklyn, mm. uh, to a wonderful person that lived at uh, lived in Brooklyn, but was 
very much connected with Osto's community. Gerald. Uh, Gerald Myers. Uh, yeah, I wanted to go to that uh, as well. Oh, uh, uh, it, it, it was. To make it was it. Yeah, they're planning a memorial, by the way. Yeah. At Osto, so that, you know, we'll let you know. Yeah, I'm sad to hear about it. Yeah, so this. anyway, so she took the, you know, she got off the brook now because of the traffic. And we went right through the neighborhoods. You know, maybe this is an omen <laughs> to me to, you know, to recollect all the yeah. places. So anyway, so once we moved to the Bronx and I was in school, I was on Concord Avenue, Evelyn and Jackson Avenue. Uh, I made a lot of my childhood friends that up until now, I still have uh, one that's still with me. Sure, wow. She's... Uh, She's living in Arizona, but we, you know, contact each other, and she used to come in quite regularly to see her, her sons. Yeah. But now with COVID, she hasn't been in New York at yeah, all, and yeah. and we're sort of slowing down a bit. But uh, I have such wonderful memories of her mom, uh, and my other friend Nilka, and uh, oh my goodness. Uh, the, the, the list is so long, but I did make friends, and most of them lived on 152nd Street. Okay, okay, yeah. Because what had happened was that, you know, the way the city is with or the uh, owners of the apartments, you know, uh, they didn't rent to everybody. Oh, of course. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And uh, we, were, we were the only Puerto Rican family on Concord Avenue. I was going to ask you, yeah. We were the only ones. It was Irish, Jewish. German, Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was our block. Yeah. But 152nd, for some reason, there was more, you know, there were a lot of Italians still. And, sure. And, and other uh, West Indians. Yeah. Uh, Italian, West Indian, Puerto, and a large number of Puerto Ricans. I see. In fact, uh, Powell, General Powell. Sure. Lived uh, not too far from us. Yeah. I mean, he was... Uh, he wasn't in our group, but you know, we later found out that he just he's where he lived yes, there. Close, close so, by, yeah. Yeah, he, very close. Yeah. Uh, my co girlfriend lived on Wales Avenue, one lived on 52nd Street, two, two lived on 52nd. And um, we, the parents, you know, they knew each other but didn't visit each other. You know, you just didn't go to people's houses. Oh, like sure, that. sure. And, it, and with the Puerto Rican culture, you don't just go to people's houses yeah. and you don't stay over, you know, yeah, that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. There were, my mother was very strict about that and, and all the families. Sure. But for some reason, we connected with these families. Yeah. And uh, my girlfriend, Alma, who lived in the same building as, as Evelina, uh, she was connected to, to Josie's family, you know, because her mother used to take care of children, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, she was a fantastic cook. Oh. So I learned a lot just from watching her. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know if you've uh, experienced having pasteles. Oh, I love, I love pasteles, yeah. You do, but <laughs> so uh, I learned, because she used to have like a assembly line. Yeah, uh, sure. Josie's mom, and, and we would sit there and one had to do this and do that. And, <laughs> sure. and that's how it, my mother never made pastel and she said it was too much work. It's Even open. though she was a great cook, you sure. know, uh, she didn't, she, but she didn't have the time either. Yeah, what, what kinds of things would she usually cook? Mama, mm -hmm. uh, everything Puerto Rican. It was uh, chicken soup, arroz con pollo, uh, arroz con gandules. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, frituras, sure. uh, bacalao, oh, yeah, catfish, yeah. which, you know, now the catfish is very expensive and that was the it cheapest is, yeah. thing that you could get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grew up, uh, you know, during that time, you know, we, money was tight and you cooked certain things that, uh, you know, meat maybe, uh, once or twice a week. Sure. But, you know, in between, you know, there were other things. Um, she made these, well, I used to love frituras uh, mm. of uh, squash. 
Oh, okay, sure, yeah. And they were delicious. That and she used to make bacalaitos. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, she, uh, the soups, of course, uh, uh, asopaos. Sure. Um, it, it was just uh, things that she knew from, from being poor. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, we loved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dumplinas, I don't know if you've heard of Dumplinas. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, have, and, yeah. And that we, she would give us with, um, with red beans. Sure. And, that, and a glass of water, and that would fill <laughs> your stomach <laughs> <It> with <makes> <laughs> <laughs> So those things I remember. And one of the wonderful things that I remember was our Sunday dinners. Mm. Because, oh, oh, by the way, during the week, we all, and well, Every day we were we ate together. Sure. Now, in our home, it was Lillian, me, and my mom, and she used to get home around six o'clock. So I, and she used to leave the food ready, you know, so sure. she would heat it in the morning, uh, in the evening, or Lillian would cook, but we would eat together. Yeah. That was a ritual. Yeah. I mean, it was there was no question that, that we wouldn't eat together. And that's when we, you know, sort of caught up with each other. And on Sunday was the Sunday that Evelina came over with her family. Sure. And um, I have a story about that. My sister was always late. <laughs> always late. And my mother said we could not sit down to eat until she got there. Yeah. So we would wait and wait. And then finally she would come. And we were all we were all upset, but once she got there, and she started with her stories, we forgot that we were angry. <laughs> and and the food that that was the uh, the day that we had um, chicken soup, arroz con pollo, beans, salad, uh, and a dessert. Yeah. There was always a dessert. It was probably like, you know, the canned fruit. Sure, we sure. Have that, uh, uh, things like that. But there was always something sweet, sweet at the yeah. at the uh, dinner, and it was a time for us to get together and to talk, and be you know and be together. Sure. And uh, it was just great. It, you know, we used to look forward to it, um, and it wasn't a Sunday that we didn't miss out when my mother was able to to cook. Yeah. And, yeah. And even when when she couldn't, uh, we still you know we still got together. Sure. Yeah. And uh, let me see now. Uh, from there, uh, so here I am. I know I'm jumping around, but oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, after uh, elementary school, I went to junior high school. Sure. And that was. Um, it was called Wilton Junior High School, Junior High School 30. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which now it's not, it's they not called. the numbers on The numbers and, and, and also the it's, it's uh, it used to be an all-girls school. Mm. The boys were down two blocks from us. Sure. Uh, junior High School, Clark, Clark Junior High School Clark was Junior for the high boys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we used to work with, my girlfriend Clara and I used to go walking she lived on Wales, I lived on Concord, and we would go to, to junior high school together. Yeah. Now, uh, when we could, when it was possible, we would take the trolley. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if not, we would walk. I think we would walk more in the summertime, you know. Sure. During the warmer weathers and, and get on the trolley. It's so funny. People say the trolley. You were on the trolley. <laughs> yeah, I was on the trolley. So um, we went to school together. There, we did very well. You know, I had some great teachers. Um, it wasn't, you know, segregated in any sense of the word. Sure. Was, it was a very diverse, and uh, one of the teachers that I remember very well was one of my. It was my gym teacher. Yeah. And she used to come with stories about where she lived or where she grew up. She grew up around Gun Hill Avenue. Oh, Hill okay, Road. okay, yeah. And she used to talk about, you know, when she grew up. And at that time, it was all farmland. Yeah, yeah. 
and I was fascinated. Sure. Because I always liked history. And she was the one that during our hygiene class said to us, be true to your teeth or they will be false to you. Mm. And I never forgot that. <laughs> so I'm one insane. of those that goes to the dentist every three or four months. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, good for you. <laughs> yeah. But I, I wish I was she was here now so I could tell her that her advice and I followed her advice. So uh, and remind me to tell you about Gun Hill Road after sure. um, when I after I got married. I'll, I'll tell you a story about Gun Hill. So um, we went to there and then uh, uh, we were ready for high school and they started, you know, recommending, they recommend, they recommended me to go to uh, Walton, Walton, oh, okay. Junior, J Walton High School, Walton high which school, was the sure. sister school to Walton Junior, to junior high, school. high School, right? Yeah, yeah. And the teacher, you know, tried to encourage me. She said, you know, that I had the ability and all that. But guess what? I wanted to follow my girlfriend. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and my biggest thing at that time was to be a secretary. Sure, I thought sure. that was, you know, the way to go and to get a job and all yeah. that. So uh, I did, you know, I, I decided that Bronx Vocational, which was on St. Anne's Avenue, sure. and I, we, we used to walk there. So we went there. We got a great education. Yeah. Because uh, it was geared for uh, women, young women that wanted to go to work after yeah. they graduated. And uh, it was, uh, besides the, the, the uh, secretarial, which was, that we had shorthand. Yeah. I, I took the Greg and, uh, and bookkeeping. Okay, sure. So, you know, it was, you know, really preparing us to go to work. Yeah, definitely. And I felt that it was important because, you know, my mom had been working all those years and Lillian too. Uh, Lillian was working, a lot. you know, she's she's already working different jobs. Sure. And uh, at this point, I you know, I go to high school, and here I, that group of girls that I grew up with, we yeah. were all together. All together, all of us. Huh? I, yeah, um, we just we we grew up. You know, we had a. a until we got married, we were all together. Yeah. We used to uh, party together. And, <laughs> sure. Yeah. And I'll tell you about that too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but, it, and then uh, there was uh, the boys in the neighborhood that everybody was eyeing. <laughs> sure. So, you know, it, it was, a, it was a quite interesting. Uh, I love, I love, uh, I love those years because, uh, you know, we were we were innocent, you yeah. know. Uh, we just didn't, you know, we listened to our parents. Sure. The, 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 the storekeepers used to keep an eye on us. Oh, absolutely. I I've mean, heard that from I, <laughs> I remember, you know, uh, when one day, I don't know what I was doing, I was on 152nd Street and... You have to imagine all the stores. We had the deli, we had the shoe store, um, uh, every uh, pickle store. Yeah. Um, there was just everything that you could imagine, the cleaners, sure. everything was there. And <laughs> every storekeeper knew your name. Yeah. And if you did something wrong, they said, I'm going to tell your mother tonight when she comes home from work. And you didn't want that. You just no didn't want that. So, you know, we, they, they kept the tabs on us. Oh, absolutely. They really absolutely. did. And uh, even the dentist was in the corner. Okay, wow. Yeah. And you know what we had in that area? And this may sound funny to you. We had a very small grocery store, which was a... Uh, a and P. Oh, sure, sure. A and P. It was very yeah. small. A small A and P. Huh? It was right off Westchester and Jackson Avenue. Okay, okay, yeah. 
And the others were, you know, what everybody calls now bodegas, but yeah. they really weren't. They were just grocery stores. Sure, sure. Because <laughs> unless, unless they were Latinos, it, it didn't become a bodega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. now everybody's a bodega. Yeah, everything. Yeah, <laughs> Bodeguero, sure. I should say. <laughs> sure. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was interesting. And the police, uh, the, they used to patrol yeah. on the corner. And they knew everybody's name. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that before too. And uh, there was one in particular, he had red hair, but for some reason he resembled a little bit Joe DiMaggio. Oh. <laughs> and we used to call him Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was really fun. Oh, I forgot, the candy store. Oh, there I was a candy you. Yeah, store. Did you, is that where you oh. all hang, hung out? Actually, we, you know where we hung out? Ice cream parlor. Oh, okay, okay. There was yeah. one on Westchester off off 152nd Street. Okay, yeah. And we used to go hang out there. Yeah. For hours. They wouldn't say a thing. Did they have a we jukebox? Would, they had a jukebox. Yeah. That's probably how we learned all the songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know that when they sing some of the songs from that, that time, I still remember the words. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I even surprised myself. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, we used to go there to the ice cream parlor. Oh, after the ice cream parlor, we graduated to the pizzeria. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. We used to go to the pizzeria on 152nd Street, and uh, they made the best pizzas. And we would there hang out uh, and buy up pizzas with a Coke. In the ice cream parlor, we used to have ice cream frap. Mm. With the marshmallow over the ice cream, I remember that. Wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were good times. So here I am, um, I'm in high, before high school. Evelina had Lorraine and uh, she was three years old. So that would make me 12. I was 12 years old. Yeah. And Evelina was working. Mm. Her husband was in the uh, army. Okay, sure. And uh, I was uh, chosen to pick her up from nursery school. Mm. And nursery school was about, uh, about five blocks away from where we lived. Yeah. Uh, um, and we used to walk on Westchester Avenue. And again, like I told you, all these uh, storekeepers would be, you know, outside. It, it was the summertime. And Lorraine, at three years old, learned some very colorful words in, <laughs> in the nursery. Uh, and you have to understand that I came from a family where I never heard curse words. Yeah. My mother didn't curse. Lavelina didn't curse. Lillian. So, you know, to me, it was, you know, that's what it was. You don't curse. Yeah. Well, Lorraine was actually, had learned the words and was rhyming them with song and she, um, I have picked her up and she's we're walking on Westchester and she's singing all these oh, I no. was I was so embarrassed <laughs> I was angry and I went home and I when my mother came I said that I'm not going to pick her up anymore and my mother said how can you do that your sister has to go to work blah 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 I, you know so I'm talking yeah. here yeah, I'm 12 years old yeah um, but uh, then Evelina said to me, uh, no, she says, you know what, don't pay attention to us. She'll, she'll, if you don't make a big thing out of it, she will. So she, eventually she stopped. Yeah, yeah. But it was very hard for me. <laughs> I'm sure. Especially walking and all these people looking and she's, and they were very colorful. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I remember. And I used to, you know, I used to babysit a lot yeah. for her. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was one of the incidents. But Evelina had always been uh, my big sister that, you know, she, because she was so modern, you know, there were certain things that, you know, she would, I would tell her and then she would tell my mother, you know, because my mother would listen to her like she was... <laughs> you know, yeah, because she was so knowledgeable, sure. And she would tell her, Well, you know, this and this and that. So she was my savior in many cases. One day, one day, I, 
I, I said I was going to run away. And I, I, I left the house and went to Evelina's house, to her apartment, rather. And uh, <laughs> my mother called her and she said, don't worry, she's here. And then she talked to me and finally I went back home. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you know I, I guess we all go through it, you know, sometimes, you know. Oh, absolutely. Saying that, you know, I don't want to be here or whatever. But, uh, yeah, that was, there was another time about the same age. I, I, I guess I was feeling my, my roots and, and uh, I, I don't know what it was. I don't know what I wanted to do. And my mother said no. And I went. Down, we had an apartment. I don't. The old apartments had a lot of long hallways. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. It, this was only one bedroom and a living room, and the the kitchen was the largest room. Yeah. And I went down and I went out the door and I slammed it. <laughs> and my mother came running after me. And during that, just when she was. Uh, uh, going to get me, my cousin came, the one that came, sure. Santos, she came and she, she stopped her, she said, no, no, Eva, don't, no, she thought she was going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last time I ever did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? Because ordinarily, I, I, you know, I would accept things and I don't know why, I, that day I didn't. And, <laughs> Uh, I almost paid for it because let me tell you, all my mother had to do was give me the look and <laughs> that was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we did have a lot of respect for our parents. You sure. Know, they said, you don't do this. You, and uh, it was just, that's the way it was. So now when I see these kids, you know, that they, they're disrespectful, they don't. Or even the parents that are yeah. cursing at their kids. I know, yeah, you yeah. Know, and, and then you can't say anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's They'll horrible. turn it right towards you if you... If you exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, so here I am. Uh, now uh, I'm in high school. And uh, I'm doing... I did exceptionally well. Sure. In the last year of high school they tell it they, they, they're sending us to the uh, counselor and the person that's going to help you look for a job because that was the other thing that the school did oh they I sent see. you on job interview wow wow yeah. and uh, my counselor said to me miss pope i'll never forget because she she started this conversation and she was hesitating and why was she hesitating? She says, you know, I just want you to be aware that uh, we'll be sending you on interviews and maybe you know, you won't be able to get, and she was hemming and hawing, and what was it? Uh, that I might not get the job because of my color. Sure, yeah, yeah. And uh, in the meantime, all my friends that had gotten jobs were, uh, were Puerto Rican as well, but they were lighter skin. I see. Their hair was different, you yeah. know, straight and all that, which made a difference to these corporations Absolutely. downtown. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, didn't help me. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> it made me feel less than. Uh, I held back the tears with Miss Pope because I knew that she was struggling with it. Yeah. You know, she didn't want to hurt, hurt me and she had to tell me what the truth was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they, I mean, they did send me on those interviews and I didn't do well. Mm. I, I didn't get the oh, jobs. Sure, Not that sure. I didn't do well, I just didn't get the job. Yeah. So at that point, Evelina's working with District 65, the union. Sure, yeah, yeah. And she wanted me to go down to the hiring hall and and I was sort of hesitating. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't want any favors. I figured because she was working there. But, you know, finally I, you know, I went down. By the way, I did talk to my mother about the situation, and she said, "Don't worry." She says, "You'll be okay." Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. She encouraged me. Uh, you know, with what had happened in school. Yeah. So, 
then we, uh, I got uh, to go down to the uh, Union. Uh, the first one they did send me, it was only like for a part-time, temporary, it may have been even for a week. With eleven ninety nine. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that was very short lived. Sure. And then uh, I got a job. My first big job was at uh, Orchard Street. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was L and B hosiery, mm. and it was uh, uh, that whole area was Jewish. Yeah. So uh, and they were unionized. Oh, I see. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Once I got the job, I was, and they gave me the salary and my benefits, I was making almost $10,000 more than my friend. Wow. And this was a, a United Retail and Office Workers? Is that yeah. District 65? This guy, yeah, they're no uh, longer yeah. in existence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, office workers and retail. And retail, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got the job. I was making... Forty dollars, forty-four dollars, something like that. Okay. A yeah. week. Yeah. More than my mom. Yeah. Uh, I had sixteen days of holiday. Wow. Because yeah. they took the Jewish holidays too. Sure, sure. And uh, two weeks vacation. Okay. Yeah. So I worked there for two years, and it was a great job. Uh, I got my hosiery. Uh, and they later had, had uh, like women's uh, lingerie. Sure. But uh, I got everything at a wholesale price. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my family, you know, I used to bring uh, buy the stuff and for them. And I I got a lot of my skills there. Yeah, absolutely. With, with the uh, secretarial and some bookkeeping, I did some bookkeeping there. And after the two years, there was uh, a lot of, it was a strike, they were going, they were, they, a lot of stuff was happening with the, with the uh, stores in that area sure. and the union. And, sure. And uh, anyway, I, I, I lost my job there, mm -hmm. um, but then I went back to the union and they sent me to Breitman and Gaffin Shoe Wholesalers. Mm -hmm. And I was there for seven years. Oh, okay, wow, yeah. And uh, it was a great job. Uh, they really, really liked me, and uh, I learned more there. And <laughs> my family had shoes uh, forever because <laughs> I, what it would happen was they would give us the price of uh, wholesale, yeah, or even cost, you know, for them. Which could wow. be maybe three or four dollars, you yeah. know. So at the end of my pay period, I was pushing out this all this money. But uh, and my my cousin Santos, she was the beneficiary of a lot because <laughs> she was a size three, mm. which was a sample size at that time. Okay, yeah. And so I used to get her a lot of shoes, <laughs> and then Evelina got and and Lillian, my mother, everybody. So that was that was good, but that was a good experience. Uh, they uh, the area was uh, different, you know. They, in fact, you know that the in fact you know that the uh, uh, Dwayne Reed, sure. they're originally from from that area. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So I used to go to that pharmacy. Yeah, wow. And they were on Duane, Duane, near Duane Street. I was on Duane, they were du uh, uh, Duane Reed. It, and was, it was just that one location, I guess. It was time. just one location, wow, it was a yeah. pharmacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look what happened. I know, I yeah. know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that was an interesting job. Uh, we had people coming, uh, wholesalers coming in from Jersey and from uh, Atlanta, yeah. you know, from the East Coast, and they would buy the, the lots, job sure. lots, and take them to their shoe stores, to their shoe stores to sell them, you know. Yeah. Because these were uh, rejects or, or just, you know, maybe they, the company made too many 
shoes and then they would give them as job lots. Sure. So that was, it was interesting. Sure, yeah. I, le- I learned a lot from that. And I learned a lot from, from the uh, people that worked there. And uh, it was always a different, you know, uh, like Penny was the bookkeeper. She was Greek, mm. of Greek descent. And I was Puerto Rican, and there were African Americans, and there were Jewish, and you know, so I was used to that. Sure, absolutely. I was used to you know being in a place where it was all different people. Absolutely. And uh, so my accent became very Jewish-like. <laughs> and uh, one time, one the guy from Atlanta had called, and I mean, I he called all the time, and I would talk to him, and he thought I was Jewish. <laughs> and when he came in from from Atlanta one time, <laughs> he wanted to, to meet me, yeah. and he was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> My boss thought, thought it was so funny. <laughs> but it was that, you know, I'm very good at, when I'm around people, I, I can sort of get their accent. Sure. You yeah. know, if, if I hear it enough. And the, and the words that are being used. Yeah. So I used to pick up on all that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, it was really funny. I'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So during that time now, uh, and I'm, I had graduated with honors, and I was, so I was 17 when I graduated. Sure. And then um, I, when I went to work, you know, I was, I was probably eighteen when yeah. I was in, at Bud Gordon and Gaffin. Anyway, my girlfriend Helen and uh, Josie, uh, they used to go dancing. Ah, I was going to ask you. you they used to go dancing. dancing, and they, they, you know, they were already beginning. To, they were partying, but you know, I was, I was very shy. Sure, sure. I, I you know, I didn't, you know, I was, I wasn't into that, and. Uh, I came from a home where, you know, the, my mother, you know, as much as my mother saw all this with the musicians and so she was not a party person either. I see, yeah, yeah, So, yeah. and Lillian wasn't either, so, I, you know, I was in that environment. And, but I, I had learned, you know, through my girlfriends how to dance and all that. Sure. Okay. So, they, uh, and I had also lost a lot of weight. I had been on the heavy side. Mm. So, I was real, th- and they wanted me to go with them to the Palladium. Ah, the Palladium, of yes. course, yeah. And I, I said, yeah, okay, I'll go, you know. And Helen said, you know, uh, we'll pick you up. Uh, I'll go do your makeup. Or oh, I, I was supposed to go to hers to do the makeup on my face. Uh, and uh, we set a time. It was a Friday, because Fridays was the the night that they went, that sure. people went, it was cheaper too. It was a dollar yeah. to get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you went before ten, it was a dollar. Wow. Yeah. And they had like four or five bands playing. Sure. So she said, uh, you know, we set the date, and I said, okay. So then she calls me when I got home, or oh, I called her, and I said, no, I don't think I'm gonna go because I'm really tired. I had a long day at work. Yeah. And she's. This is what she said to me. She says, if you don't come here to get your makeup done and come with us, I will go to your house. <laughs> so I said, okay, okay. So I got dressed and I had a nice new outfit, which I got at a job. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, I had gotten this beautiful uh, outfit. And uh, <laughs> I said, okay. So we, I went, we went down. And, you know, this is the, I had been to like a, uh, there was a Corso mm. on 100, no, uh, 86th Street. On 86th Street, And yeah. they, they had Latin music, but sure. it wasn't a dance hall, it was a nightclub. Sure. And they had performance, so I had done that. Yeah. But I hadn't gone to a place where you dance. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I was really, you know, uh, I, I wasn't too crazy about going, but anyway. So we get there, and this place was huge. Oh, I've, I've seen huge. pictures. And, yeah, yeah, it was huge. I guess Jose 
I can assume so do all that. And we have a we have a small collection in the archives too that um, uh, not only the Palladium but some of the Bronx venues as well. Oh yeah, um, we had in the Bronx too, and yeah. that happened later. But the, yeah. for me, the the, the Palladium and the Corso were the first. Sure, sure. And uh, anyway, so here we are. We go upstairs because you had to go up these stairs. Yeah. Excuse me. And we weren't there five minutes. And this young man comes across the whole uh, ballroom to ask me to dance. And my, and, and my girlfriend says, go ahead, go ahead, because I, I was going to tell him no. So I danced with him, and she, so she, like, then he brought me back. And he says to, uh, she, you know, we talked a little bit, and then he went away. And Helen says, I've been coming here all these months, nobody ever ran across the, <laughs> the ballroom for me. So that was the, when I was, when I met my future husband. Yeah, wow, what so a story. <laughs> I saw him that day, and maybe I danced with him maybe once or twice. Yeah. I never saw him again for three months. He was in okay. the service. He took my number. He gave me a false name. <laughs> Uh, which now I laugh at, <laughs> and uh, that was the end of that. I yeah. mean, then I went with them, you know, a few times. I never saw him again. Sure. And this was August, August seventh to be exact. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then August, September, October. In October, we went to a dance hall in in. Uh, Hunts, Hunts Point Palace. Hunts Point Palace, another And guess who was there? Club. He, he was, was there. there. Huh? Wow. <laughs> he was there. He had just gotten discharged yeah. from the army. He had been in Korea. Okay, I see, I see, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, he came over and we started to dance and, you know, uh, we talked and he gave me his number again. This time he gave me the right number. I, I think he had given me the right number just... The wrong name. <laughs> the wrong name. Um, but it was so funny because when when he first met me, he said, where do you live? And I said, the Bronx. He said, okay. And he later, later told me why he asked, because he he wouldn't date anybody that was from Brooklyn or Queens because it was too far. Uh, and the guy sure. said that. Sure. If you were from Brooklyn, and if, they, if the person was from Brooklyn and you were from Brooklyn, that was fine. Yeah. But if you weren't, you know, because then they had to think in terms of taking you home and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But another funny story happened when we were at the Palladium because we did go to the Palladium, uh, and before you know, uh, uh, when he when we started to go out again. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> this was funny. Uh, Josie and Helen lived near me, so and. And he lived in uh, in Harlem. Oh, okay, Harlem. sure. So we decided, you know, we want to take a cab, and so we pulled our money. And you know, he came along with us, and because he would, he said he would come back to, uh, you know, he would drop us off and then go back to Harlem. Well, when we got to Saint Anne's Avenue, in the Bronx. We, we we knew how much money we had and yeah. we knew what was on the meter and we told the cab driver, stop right here. Well, that driver thought we were either going to run out and not pay him or do something. You yeah. Know? And we gave him the money, <laughs> the money that was on the meter. <laughs> I guess he was relieved. So we were maybe... A half a mile from home. Sure, yeah. So we all worked together, and then Tony didn't have any money left. He walked home. To oh, Harlem. okay. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that was that was another hol um, Palladium story. Yeah. But another Palladium story, when Tony and I went, and I guess we were just boyfriend and girlfriend then. We were dating, and you know used to stand in front of the bandstand. Sure, sure. You know, people would be dancing, but there was a group of us that would, just, you know, watch the musicians and 
uh, Ray Barreto, course, and yeah. Mungo Santa Maria. Mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, the, talking about with the Tito Ben, Tito Puente, uh, they were all these, and we would watch. And then came on Machito. Sure. And when Machito came on, when at one point where I was able to to say something to him, uh, I told him who I was. Yeah. And he knew me as Godros, Godros, uh, La Hija de Godro. That's oh, how they sure. called me. Sure. Uh, that was my uncle. And well, they were all excited to see me as a grown person. <laughs> yeah. And Mario Bassa just came over. He just hugged me, and they were all very excited to see me. I'm sure. And I let my uncle know too that I had seen them, and yeah. they had asked for him. He was in Puerto Rico. So uh, yeah, that was that was quite interesting. And you know what I forgot to say to you? Uh, can I go back? Of a course, bit? of course, yeah. When I was sixteen, actually, even before I was sixteen, I think I was around. 14, my mother went back to Puerto Rico mm. to visit my aunt and to visit the island. And she wanted to take me and I didn't want to go because I sure. didn't want to leave my girlfriends. You know, yeah. I was too, you know how teenagers are, right? Absolutely. You're stupid. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't go then, but at the age of 16, uh, I went with another friend, uh, to visit my aunt, mm. and that was the first time, you know, I didn't remember being, you know, when I was born. Yeah. Uh, we went on a plane that took, it was, uh, uh, wasn't the jets, what came before the jets, the uh, the regular plane, oh. motor, the motor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, it took nine hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. We took the 11 o'clock flight out at night and we got there at 6 in the morning. Wow. Something like that. So we were there for, for two weeks. Yeah, I was working then. Uh, no, I wasn't working. My mother paid for the fare and everything. Yeah. But we went there for two weeks. We had a great time. I cried because when I, when I saw the mm. island, because when you're coming in at that time, it's, it, it's already light, yeah. And uh, and I saw how beautiful it was, you know, yeah. the palm trees, and I started to cry. And I said, my mother had to leave here, you yeah. know, she had to leave because of the of the situation. Or, you know, Absolutely. You know, she was making twenty five cents a week. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, right? I know. Absolutely. So um, that was my first experience going to PR. My aunt was there. I, I got to know San Juan. Sure. She lived in old San Juan. Oh, okay. That's where that they moved back to when they moved back. They moved yeah, they moved okay. there. They, they, I still, when I go back, I go back and I look at the place they lived in. Yeah. Which is now, it's interesting because it, it had two, or, two or three or four apartments. That was it. Sure. With a terrace. And... Uh, now it's a senior senior for senior housing. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I go back when I go back. I always go to San Juan. Yeah. Because it brings back wonderful memories of sure. of walking through and uh, it was just wonderful. My my uncle, my uncle, you know, like he had here in New York, he he got different jobs. Yeah. He was working at the racetrack. Okay, sure. And he was working on the on the. Um, uh, ducks. Oh, okay, Loading okay. and unloading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did that too. It's hard work. <laughs> yeah, hard work. My aunt was working for the um, mayor's office. Oh, okay. Which was right there. Yeah. You know, she, she just, she had to walk. And he, he only had to walk to the Muelles. That's what you call it. Sure. And uh, with the racetrack, he had to take a bus. Yeah. But, you know, I didn't tell you he was a wonderful cook. Oh, no, no, you didn't, no. I didn't tell you that that's, that's what saved the household because he, you know, they were working, my aunt and my mom. Yeah. And he would cook. Wow. Because he was, the, you know, the runner. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so he, he had different he, hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and one, one time when I went to Puerto Rico, I think that was the time my aunt was 
was in the kitchen cooking, and she said, you know, she was making lunch or something. She, and she says, do you want to eat now? She says, I said, do you cook? <laughs> I've never seen a cook in New York. Because <laughs> my uncle was always the one that cooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah, that was, that was really funny. Um, so that was my first experience, and he had friends that worked in the uh, newspaper and the hotels, and his very best friend, who he called Kompai, mm, that sure. Kompai is the... Uh, he was the godfather to my cousin. Okay, yeah. And they had grown up together, and he was a big shot at the uh, Hilton uh, with the, uh, the gambling. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was he had, he was one of the bosses, so you know I was able to go there. Wow. And yeah. it was it was just a lot of fun. We yeah. had a lot a lot of fun. Did you all go back to Salinas or? Oh yes. Jose? Yeah. And that trip too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if it was that trip or later, because then I started to go a lot after that. But I did go to Salinas, I had been, you know, uh, Ponce, my aunt, you know, was always, she she became, uh, she worked for, for the mayor's office. Sure. So during election time, they used to send her all over uh, campaigning. Oh, okay, yeah, So yeah, she, yeah. she used to visit all the islands, so she was all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, and uh, <laughs> so yeah, she did take me. She took me to. We used to go to Ponce in. Uh, they called a uh, this car like a taxi. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. you would call and make a reservation. Yeah. And we would go and would they would go through the mountains. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because there was no uh, highway. Yeah. Oh my God! I thought I was gonna die. Yeah, I didn't I'm come. Sure. It was quite, ex you know. But you uh, we had. The edge yeah, <laughs> I don't even want to remember. Yeah. Yeah. I had another experience like that. I'll tell you about in Spain. Oh sure. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yeah. Um, we. Uh, I got to know Salinas because I had cousins still living there. Sure. Uh, also Ponce. Um, it wasn't family, but it was friends of my aunts that went there. So I got to know, you know, they took me around the island. Yeah, so I did yeah. that on several occasions, you know, several sure. times that I went there. So I come back uh, home, uh, it, you know, that's, so, so if I was 16, I was still in school. It was probably the year before I graduated. Yeah. Yeah, but that was, that was the first time that I had gone back. Yeah, yeah. And it was interesting. My mother, you know, when she went, she she struggled about going back because she said she had suffered too much. Sure, sure. She struggled, and uh, but then she did go, and but by the, this time, you know, she she wasn't gonna leave her family. Yeah. And go back. Yeah. And you know, she she was still working. And she you know she was fine. Uh, so here I am. Um, let's go back to Palladium times. Sure, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so here I, you know, um, now I, I got, uh, I started to go out more with uh, my friends, and uh, there were other dance halls, like you said, in, in, in the Bronx. And it was, you know, we were still a small community, so people sure. knew each other. Sure. And uh, uh, Evelina was, you know, in her her place. My mother was in hers. And then uh, we, I, I was very, you know, I was really happy. I was working, and and then uh, my husband Tony uh, started calling me, you know. Sure. And we started going out more often, and all of that, and. Uh, uh, you know, he, he was really my first love. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and he was quite handsome, and he came from a West Indian family. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah. He was, but he had grown up in the Puerto Rican uh, community, so he knew Spanish, and he thought, I told him one day, you think you're Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, um, uh, 
he was born in Dominica. Oh, okay, sure. The, I, the island of Dominica. Yeah. And uh, his parents, uh, his mother was from Dominica and his father was from uh, St. Kitts. I see, I the see. The Mondesians yeah. are from St. Kitts. His mother was Revere. And that that's an interesting uh, background because uh, his mother was born and raised in, in uh, Dominica, but she was educated in Belgium. Oh, wow. wow. Her father was the, considered one of the richest men on, on, on the island. Yeah. They were the first to have cars. And, wow. Uh, it was a large family. There were seven children. Sure. And they were brought up, you know, uh, wealthy. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, when the when the father died, they they lost everything because mm. they didn't know how to handle the finances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They lost everything but one house that was uh, uh, on the main street. And you, if you go there now, you know people still remember the Revere's and the Mondesi's. Wow. Yeah, and my oldest son has visited. Yeah. Yeah, there's still family that we know. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they were such a big family. But m m most of them are gone now. Sure. But it was an interesting, it was interesting to me when I first met Tony's family because, because of the Caribbean, the mixtures are like in Puerto Rico. Absolutely. So you could have light skin, dark skin, medium skin, and it, you know, it was the same thing. Yeah. And when he took me to a party at his cousin's house, <laughs> I said, oh, I said, they, I told them they would look like they're Puerto Rican. <laughs> so uh, they were great people, uh, loved them. Uh, and most of them are gone now. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have, actually, it's the other generation. Uh, they're, the cousins are around. Uh, sure. One, one of the cousins, she's still around, uh, the Mondesia side. Uh, Tony left about 25 years ago. He wow. transitioned. Wow. His sister died about 10 years ago. Okay, I Missy. see. No. No, not even 10. Uh, because the Q, my, my little granddaughter was a baby and she's four. So about, she, she died about four years ago. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Tony's parents, of course, and, and mine. Yeah. Uh, you know, so the losses for me, you know, my sisters, uh, you know, it's been really tough. I'm sure it has. I'm sure it has. It's, uh, it's been a little hard. Absolutely. And especially when I start talking about them, you know. Yeah. But uh, I have such good, good memories. So, um, yeah, so anyway, let me, let me backtrack a little bit with Lillian and Evelina. Sure. Because it's important. Uh, they, they were my role models. Yeah, I'm sure they were, yeah. Uh, and they, they felt that, uh, that I could do anything, but I, I didn't feel that way. Yeah. You know, they really, you know, uh, nurtured me and, and helped me. Uh, and I appreciate that till, till now and forever. Yeah. Um, so when Evelina comes to the Bronx now, you know, she's already, an, uh, she's an adult and she's very uh, clear as to what, what should be done. So she gets, she, you know, she got involved uh, with people, uh, especially when she went to work at the union too. Oh, I'm sure, I'm Because sure. she also was, um, Recruiting, I recruiting see. Puerto Rican and other Latinos to work in, in the industries sure. that they service, and uh, she she was there for quite a few years. Uh, I would say something like four years. Okay, yeah. Uh, she, before that, she had worked in the post office as well. Oh, okay. She worked in the post office. Yeah, too. during okay, the wow. war. Yeah. And then she worked at the union. Um, so, you know, she was 
pretty active in, in her thoughts, yeah. you know, because she, she really, you know, I, I think she was born with, with her knowledge yeah. of people and what had to be done. I really do. Absolutely. I don't think you can learn that. I think it has to come within you. Yeah. You know, it has to be something that your passion. Definitely. And she had the passion for people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, when she, uh, when she, you know, she got a divorce from, from her first husband, that was Lorraine's father. Sure. Uh, she was alone for a while. Uh, in the meantime, you know, she had gone back and forth to Puerto Rico. She went to Puerto Rico with Lillian a couple of times. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they uh, went to, you know, because they still remembered, you know. Sure. The, she was 11 when she came to this country. And Lillian, two years later, would have been 10, 10 years old. Yeah. So they, you know, they had a, a grounding of, of education there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was really... Uh, they learned the language and, and, and it was just different, you know, the culture, everything. Sure. Um, I have a, uh, a video uh, uh, that David Diaz did, uh, Visiones. Mm, sure, sure. And which you, you probably would like to see. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find it here and, and lend it to you. Um, but anyway, um, you know, they talked about how they felt when they came to this country. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the first thing that hit them was there was no palm trees. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And it was cold because the, I believe they came in September. Yeah, so it was so already, you already know, chilly. Cold, yeah. Chilly, and, you know, not the cold of winter, but it was still a different temperature. Sure. And then when Lillian came, it was May. Mm. And she said it was a dreary, <laughs> dreary day, yeah. which May can be. Absolutely. And she, she said she, she wanted to cry because she missed the mountains and the greenery yeah. and all that. So, yeah, yeah for, for them it was more of a shock. Definitely. Yeah, to be in this country. And, you know, different thing. The only thing that saved us, I guess, was being with family. Yeah. Oh, you know? absolutely. Yeah, it was it was uh, a wonderful, you know, situation. I grew up, you know, during that time, of that same period when my aunt had the son, uh, sons. So those were my cousins, and I was closer to age to them. Yeah, yeah. And then to Lorraine, then to 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 my sisters. Sure. So I looked up to my sisters as, you know, like uh, uh, moms. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the others were really my cousins who, who later, as I visited Puerto Rico, would always say, pick me up at the airport. You know, they had grown into men and it was very nice. 